In one of my videos, I asked the question, why would a merciful God create people he knows will fail his test and suffer eternal torture? Why not just avoid creating such people in the first place? This isn't a question of free will because God's knowledge of what we will do doesn't affect our free will, so we are told. Nor can one say God had no choice. According to Islam, God is omnipotent. He is not limited and his hands aren't tied. He can quite literally do anything he wishes. He did not have to include billions suffering eternal torture in his plan. So when I am faced with the question of whether or not I can believe in Islam, I am faced with trying to reconcile two contradicting claims. Number one, that God is the most merciful of those who show mercy. And number two, that God chose to create billions to suffer eternal torture when he didn't have to. It is not just a perfectly valid and reasonable question. It is perhaps the most fundamental question at the heart of both Islam and Christianity. Since asking this question, I have been told that a Muslim who saw my question took it to a sheikh from Birmingham called Asra al-Rashid, and he has given a response, which he posted on Facebook. So I thought it would be interesting to look at his response. He said, and I quote, A few days ago I delivered a lecture, and at the end an individual approached me who had been infected by the former Muslim virus by watching videos of anti-Islam preachers for two years. The question he had was, why would Allah create people he knew would disobey in order to punish them? Aside from telling him that God does not resemble humans in motives, human morality cannot be superimposed on God, God does what he wills, the gift of life, intellect and freedom outweighs any punishment, the punishment is reserved for those who disregard that gift, and if they returned to earth they would continue in their disbelief, the likes Christopher Hitchens, the likes of Christopher Hitchens, and many other answers that I have given on this. I saw that Imam Bhuti has said regarding this question, Has Allah created us in order to punish us? Answered by Imam Bhuti. Here is a clip from the video Sheikh Asra Rashid posted. I will put a link to the whole video in the info box. علم الله عز وجل أن في عباده من لا يطيع ومن ثم فلسوف يكون عاقبته النكال ألم يكن الأفضل أن لا يخلق هذه الخليقة منطلق سؤالهم غباء عجيب جدا هو أنهم يقيسون الخالق وهو الله عز وجل على المخلوق أي على بني البشر السؤال غلط العلة الغائية لا ترد في حق الله سبحانه وتعالى. So both Sheikh Asra Rashid and Imam Bhuti say that my question cannot be applied to God because we can't compare human reasoning to God. God does not resemble humans in motives, and God does what He wills. However, the problem with this response is that humans have no way of judging the claims made for and against religions other than by using human reason, flawed and limited as it may be. Had God made it unnecessary to use human reason to know that Islam is true, then I would agree that using human reason would be irrelevant. We would simply be faced with the choice of submitting or refusing to submit, whether it makes sense to us or not. But God didn't do that, even though he could have easily done so. God could have easily and instantly made every single human being know for certain that Islam was true beyond all doubt. Instead, he allowed the existence of competing claims and conflicting information, as well as allowing cultural, social, emotional and intellectual factors to heavily influence how we interpret evidence. He then gave us the fallible human mind as the only way to make judgments and choices and sent prophets and books that repeatedly make appeals to that very human reason 
and exhort us to use this very fallible human mind. If I should accept that God creates creatures to suffer eternal torture on the basis we can't compare human reasoning to God and God does what he wills, then why shouldn't I accept God sacrificed his son for my sins on the basis we can't compare human reasoning to God? Or why shouldn't I accept any other claim about God that doesn't make sense? As I said, humans have no other way of judging the claims made for and against religions other than by using human reason, fallible and limited as it is. If someone says, you must believe in this or that religion, or you will burn in hell, you have no choice but to ask questions about the religion you are being asked to believe in. If there are things that make no sense to you, you can't be blamed for not believing it. The contradiction between a God who claims to be the most merciful of the merciful, and yet will burn billions in a never-ending holocaust when he didn't have to, is without doubt a contradiction that cannot be dismissed by simply saying, we mustn't ask such questions.